Oh, good morning. My name is Ms. Tandy. I'm on staff with Grace Kids. And I do just so appreciate the opportunity for us to be able to pray together. And um, we, I had the privilege last um, year before we went into COVID to just be with so many of the children from the Chin Church. And there's just, we miss them and pray for, for that. You know, that's, God is hearing our prayers and he's moving in mighty ways. And I'm just so grateful for our prayer ministry here at Grace, Grace Praise. And, you know, they're offering us, we can keep praying. We don't have to stop here. All throughout the week, they have virtual prayer opportunities. And during Lent, there's a new one starting that I'm planning to join, 6 a.m. on Monday mornings for moms. So all of you moms and grandmoms out there, hope you join me tomorrow morning um, where we can just pray for our kids. Because kids, we love you so much. We're going to bring you before our Father in heaven. But let's begin our GK moment. And to begin, I've got a question for all of you kids. What do you want to be when you grow up? Go ahead, tell your parents if maybe they don't know, or your brother or sister. So share, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, you know what I wanted to be when I grew up? I wanted to be the president of the United States. Yep. But I was born in Africa, and the U.S. Constitution says you have to be, be born in the United States. So I thought, well, if I can't be president, I'd like to be the most powerful person working for the president. But God is so good and so gracious. And you know what? He's actually given me a much better job for me. I get to teach about Jesus to all of you kids, which is the best job ever, I think. So let's begin as we are learning about somebody who was given a job who did not think God had chosen the right person for a job. We're going to be in the book of Jeremiah, which is the second of the major prophets. So go ahead, turn to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. And we're going to be learning about um, Jeremiah. And uh, he's, it's the time of King Josiah. He is, um, God is going to speak to him. So let's begin. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Wow, how cool is that? Even before Jeremiah is born, God has decided what he's going to do. I mean, wow, that's pretty amazing. Did you know that's true about you as well? In fact, even before you were born, God's known all about you. Before he created the universe, he knew you. He knew into which family you would be born. And he knew how you could be part of his kingdom and share the beyond mission with him of sharing the good news of Jesus. Now you might be thinking, really? I'm not so sure. Well, Jeremiah thought the same thing. Because he goes, ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I'm only a youth. Jeremiah's thinking, um, God, I think you've got the wrong person. I'm just a child, and I'm not good at talking. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. And so Jeremiah becomes the prophet to the people of Judah. And during the reigns of five different kings, he continues to speak God's word, and God is with him. And so you're thinking, so God has chosen him before the world was even created. God knows all about him. God has promised to be with him, so he's going to be successful. The people are going to turn back to the Lord, and then he'll be the hero in the land because he's speaking the words of the Lord, right? No. You read Jeremiah. He is faithful to do God's job. And so what happens? He gets beaten. He gets thrown into prison. He gets thrown into a deep well. The people mock him. And the false prophets, they say, oh, no, 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 Jeremiah is the false prophet. He's the one who's saying things that are not true. But Jeremiah does not stop. He continues to speak God's word that judgment is coming. This is why the people don't listen. They don't like the message. He is saying, because you refuse to love and obey God, your enemies are going to come they're going to conquer our city of Jerusalem, and we will be taken prisoner. He reminds the people, the reason this is coming, remember, 
We were slaves in Egypt. And yet God, he took us out of slavery, delivered us, took us into the wilderness, brought us to the Mount Sinai, and then said, I am going to bless you. I'm going to settle you in this land. I'm going to give you rain when you need it. I'm going to give you peace from all your enemies. You won't have any of the diseases that other people have. I will bless you. You just need to obey my laws. And the people say, sure, yes, we will obey your laws. But we've learned that people do not keep their part of this covenant. This is the covenant. God's going to bless, you obey. The people don't keep their part of the covenant. And so judgment is going to come to the people. But God has mercy. He still has mercy, even though he's pronouncing judgment. And so when we get to Jeremiah 31, this is what God promises. This is the second part of Jeremiah's message to the people. He says, this is the covenant I will make with Israel after that time, announces the Lord. I will put my law in their minds. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. I will forgive their evil ways. I will not remember their sins anymore. He says a new and better covenant God is going to give us. And in this new and better covenant, it's not up to us. This is the good news. It's not up to us. This is what all the New Testament is all about. This is why Jesus came to bring us this new covenant. Jesus says, I will live that perfect life. I will keep God's laws complete, but yet I will take your punishment. He takes our punishment on the cross and dies. But how do we know that Jesus' death on the cross is the complete payment for our sin? That the punishment that, I mean, they they were punished in the Old Testament for their sin. Why do we not have the punishment? God raises him from the dead. We see that God the Father accepts God the Son, his perfect life and death. And so therefore, we are forgiven. We live under the new covenant. This is the good news that we sing about every week. This is why we gather. This is why we worship. Won't you receive the new covenant today?